Sue, and I'm one of the childbirth educators here at Holy Redeemer Hospital. Today we're going to be speaking about what labor is, and specifically contractions. So it's important for you to understand, a lot of patients ask me, well, what does a contraction feel like? It's very hard to um, have somebody who's pregnant feel a contraction. Um, but your body will, however, practice occasionally. We call those contractions Braxton Hicks contractions. Now, if you look at my poster here, most of the time the contractions are felt obviously in the belly. It starts at the top and then in a wave-like motion comes around to the front of the abdomen or stomach. Some people feel contractions as back pain or back pressure. These practice contractions can occur as early as 32 to 33 to 34 weeks. And for the most part, they last only up to an hour. They do not hurt. Um, with rest, they go away. And for the most part, most women say that they're barely aware of them. So if these types of contractions happen earlier in your pregnancy, and after an hour, you're still feeling them, they're getting stronger, harder, and longer. And with rest, they don't go away. After one hour, please call your doctor and let them know what you're experiencing. However, towards the end of your pregnancy, you're supposed to feel contractions. And again, the contractions usually start at the top of the belly and come around in a wave-like motion. So it's a rhythmic tightening and relaxing of the uterus. Again, the uterus is the workhorse of your body. It's a, it's a very large muscle. It contains the baby and all the products that you need for your pregnancy. And it's the way the body works to try to get the baby out of your body. So the purpose of the contractions is to help your body to have your baby be born. Labor starts when the contractions get longer, stronger, and closer. So they have a beginning, a middle, and an end as well. And so typically women will have a contraction and then they'll have a break. Some of the break is very long, some of the break is very short. So there can be five minutes between contractions, 10 minutes between contractions, 15, 20 minutes, a half hour between contractions. But the idea is, is when it's time for true labor, contractions will get longer, stronger, and closer together. So how do you know exactly when labor starts? One of the key components is obviously the contractions, but there's other things that happen to lead up to um, contractions. And many women and some men um, or partners will start to do something called nesting. And nesting can occur actually many months before the actual delivery of the baby. And nesting is that preparation that many couples will do to prepare their house, to prepare themselves for the arrival of the baby. Like purchase a crib, like have a shower, like get some of the things that you think that you might need for your baby um, after the delivery and you go home. So nesting is something that everybody does to some degree, and every couple does to some degree as well too. Previously we had talked about the cervix um, being the uh, bottom of the uterus, and that there's something called a mucus plug inside of the cervix. Again, it's a protective mechanism that helps um, prevent infection, and it stays there until the cervix starts to soften up. So when the cervix starts to soften up, it will expel the mucus plug. That can happen the same day that you go into labor. That can happen several weeks before. Many women don't even know that the mucus plug has uh, come out of their cervix. They're just not aware. Maybe when you go to the bathroom, you know it's in the toilet, you don't notice. It could be on your underwear, but it's just a glob of mucus. Typically, it's also tinged with a little bit of pink or even red. Um, and that's just, again, how the mucus plug comes out of the center of the cervix. Additionally, um, some women talk about um, seeing just a lot of mucus mixed with blood. And that can be in the toilet or in their underwear. It's appropriate at the end of your pregnancy to see this. However, if you're not close to your delivery date and you do see blood wicks mixed with mucus, either in the toilet or on your underwear, you should definitely call the doctor to make sure that there's no concerns um, and just describe what it is that you see. 
a bloody show just means that your service is starting to soften and possibly open. So again, at the end of your pregnancy, that's a good sign. However, prior to your delivery date may not be such a good sign, something to call the doctor about. And then uh, two other things may occur. You may find that your bag of waters um, that's contained in that amniotic sac where the baby is uh, breaks. Some women experience this as a gush of fluid, um, literally saturated. They look down, they're standing in a puddle of fluid. Um, and that's all they see. Some people experience smaller gushes of fluid um, and it doesn't stop. Some women will experience a small gush here and the end of the day maybe another gush here. If you feel as though your bag of waters has broken, you definitely need to call the doctor and let them know. Again, it's a protective mechanism, that amniotic sac that contains the baby and the fluid. And we wanna make sure that there's no infection that gets to the baby during this time. So it's important for the doctor to know when you think the bag of water may break, they'll bring you into the hospital. We can do a series of a few quick tests to determine if your bag of water is intact or it's broken. And we'll either keep you if it's broken or potentially send you home if everything else is looking good. Um, and then again, the last thing we talk about is, is contraction. So it's almost like the David Letterman's list of when uh, you know that you're in labor. And so again, some of these things will happen weeks ahead of time. Some of these things will happen a few days ahead of time. Sometimes these things will happen right at the day when you actually start to either break your bag of water or have those contractions that get longer, stronger, and closer. So contractions themselves have something called frequency, duration, and intensity. So again, we already talked about earlier that the contractions will get closer together. Um, and they can get, you know, they can be five minutes apart, they can be 10 minutes apart, they can be a half hour apart. But the idea is, is they're going to eventually get closer. Many women feel um, that these beginning contractions you, that you experience feel more like menstrual cramps. Um, some People start out and they don't even know that they're contracting. They don't feel anything in their belly at all. And other women um, feel a lot, lot of discomfort with contractions. So the, um, the amount of time that your uterus will contract can vary as well. So it can take 10 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute, or even a minute and a half for your uterus to relax to give you a break in between. People feel intensity of the contractions really differently. Sometimes it has to do with your pain tolerance. And your pain tolerance is gonna to vary. You know, unless you've gone through labor before, you don't actually know what it's gonna feel like or how you're going to react to it. Many times people talk about labor um, in relationship to a marathon. So it's a really long time that you're in labor for. And when you're in a marathon, you're running for a long time as well too. Your body gets tired. Your ability to cope with those contractions can go down as well. So what you need to do if you either broke your bag of water or you feel like you're having regular consistent contractions about every five minutes apart, five minutes apart, is that you're gonna give your doctor a call and you're gonna to explain to them what you're feeling and, and how you're reacting to it. And then the doctor's gonna probably negotiate with you a little bit, are you comfortable? Can you stay home? Can you do some walking outside? Um, how about eating and drinking? Have comfort in your own home for a little while? If he's concerned about either you or the baby, um, your physician will ask you to come to the hospital to be evaluated. And then we'll do different things to check on your bag of water, your baby, and also the contraction pattern itself. So we know um, that you are going into labor by uh, checking your cervix. And again, the cervix is the end of that uterus. It's the thing that has to open up. It has to thin out before it opens up. And then um, we, can, we can actually feel it with our fingers. So um, the cervix uh, is checked by what's called a vaginal exam. So with a sterile glove on and lubricated two fingers, we insert our fingers into the vagina and we reach for that cervix. So again, we're feeling for, with two fingers only, um, that little mini donut 
at the end of our fingers. And if it's where it should be, it's probably tucked way back into your body, which is good. The center may be open or closed. It can be thick or thin. And by the same token, you may or may not be uncomfortable during this exam, or you may be significantly uncomfortable during the exam. But that vaginal exam or cervical exam is something that we do if you feel as though you either broke your bag of water or you have um, regular contractions. So we'll check to see how far you are. And then lastly, it's really important that you understand you can bring a lot of things to the hospital, and many people do. Um, I would highly recommend that most of the things that you bring stay in the car until you are determined to be admitted to the hospital. So um, there are some things under your control and other things maybe not so much. Many things like um, whether you have a bright room or a dimmed room, that's something you can request. Whether you play music of your, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, people like different types of music to relax by. You know, um, that's individual and everybody has music on their phone. You may want to create a special um, uh, music for labor, music to labor by, if you will. Um, that's something that would help you to relax too. Um, don't forget that you're going to need clothes to go home in. Many women are not able to fit in their pre-pregnancy clothes, so actually your maternity clothes are what many women wear, or stretch pants, you know, for the bottom half of you, or stretch shorts, as the case might be. Uh, additionally, don't forget that um, you know your support person is allowed to stay in the hospital with you through labor, through delivery, through recovery, and into postpartum. So that person may not go home. Um, so they, that person should also bring a change of clothes, um, as well as any other things that they might need to stay clean and stay prepared during your labor, delivery, and postpartum care. Um, it's important that you uh, purchase a car seat before you come to the hospital. It is not necessary to bring the car seat into labor or delivery. <laughs> that also can stay in your car until the time of your discharge. So we don't need to see that as you come in for labor. Um, you're going to need a little suitcase, satchel, you know, backpack, whatever it is that you're going to pack your clothes in. The support person is going to need the same. And then don't forget you're going to need some clothes for the baby to go home in. While you're here in the hospital, we'll provide everything that your baby needs. The clothes, the diapers, the wipes, um, the blankets, all of those things will be taken care of by our hospital. The other thing is, is you're, you feel free to bring whatever it is that you would like um, in addition to that. Some um, support people bring small snacks that they like to be able to nibble. Many times if, uh, and right now during the pandemic, you know, we're only allowing one support person to come at the time of admission to comfort mom in labor. So, um, you know, that person, if they want to take a break to go to the cafeteria or to just walk around the hallway, that's perfectly fine. But a lot of support people want to stay with mom in labor. So, you know, pa small packs of crackers are good, small packs of cookies, um, you know, little jugs of juice or, or spring water or something, you know, you, special that you would like to have is really good to bring along with you. So you have what you need and maybe you don't need to leave as frequently um, to get those, those uh, breaks for food and nutrition. And please remember to check out our website at redeemerbaby.com for more information on mom care, baby care, labor and delivery. Thank you.